All right, day number 18 coming at you. Here's day number 17, the birds, sweetheart of the rodeo. Uh, so I woke up today, and I turned on the old internets and uh, was looking at some videos on YouTube. And uh, Kevin had uh, showed off his winners for the Think Pink thread, and uh, I won. So <laughs> I was one of the winners, I guess, uh, in good company with some of the winners that were on there too. So uh, congratulations to uh, everybody else that won, including myself. Great job. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I was kind of thinking about pink albums again. You know, that, that's just something that's just been going ongoing since I've been seeing all these people posting these videos. So um, this album came up in uh, 1967. Surrealistic Pillow by the Jefferson Airplane. So, uh, those of you maybe with a, a good eye might be noticing something here missing. It's because it's down here. <laughs> so, this is a uh, mono copy. Oh, yeah, before I go any further, Molly just wanted to say hello, give you a little shout out. Look at you, you're on the internets, I'm talking to you through the internets. So, friend of mine. So, hey there. Uh, anyhow, this, of course, is on the uh, mono pressing. I have a stereo pressing and a mono pressing. And um, if you ever have a chance to listen to the mono version, go for it. I mean, it is... People always talk about, oh, you know, mono versus stereo. Mono is always better. I prefer mono myself. I usually... I don't know why. I always kind of... I try to get both, but uh, mono is sort of the preferred of the two, I guess. Um... But this album is hugely, hugely, just making up words here, hugely different. Um, it's just, it, the like, the, the echo and the reverb is just not there. Like, if you, if I think about songs like, <clears throat> like, My Best Friend right now, which is on here, you know, My Best Friend, the drums on it are just, like, just echoing just immensely. Like, it's just, it's just the sound of it is just so large. Um... With the with the mono version, it's just like really punchy, and it just seems like it's like right here, you know, instead of like out here, it's here. Um, just just a completely different mix. Uh, so I don't know, maybe uh, poke around on some blogs, you know. I don't know, I don't know what you do. You do whatever you want to do, but I'm just saying, just throwing that out there. If you have a chance to do it, um, it took me a long time to find this, and uh, believe me, when I did. <laughs> it was super cheap, and I don't think the person knew what the heck they had. So, uh, and this is this is something you probably don't see too often. This on their RCA Victor label. Usually, you see you know the the RCA the RCA Dyna Darn Up Warp, as I like to refer to it as. Um, but just some great tracks on here. She has funny cars. Somebody to love. My best friend today coming back to me. Uh, Three fifths of a mile in ten seconds. DCBA twenty five. Uh, how do you feel? Embryotic journey, white rabbit, and plastic fantastic lover. So, not a not a bad track on there at all. Like I'm just thinking about this and just want to listen to it some more. I started of playing it nonstop today as much as I could. So, uh, this is their second album. Came out in 1967, February of 1967. By August, they played the Monterey Pop Festival, and by December, they. Um, did after bathing at Baxter. So within 10 months, they put out two albums. Uh, this, I think, is sort of the pinnacle of Jefferson Airplane. Um, really, you know, with Paul Cantor and Marty Ballin and Grace Slick, you know, you have kind of three vocalists there. I don't think Yorma does anything on this. I may be wrong. I can't think of it. I don't think, or yeah, I think he does one song, I believe. Um, but of course, the big one for Yorma really spotlights him as Embryotic Journey. And uh, I was kind of talking to Sam about that the other day when we were sort of talking about guitar players and everything, you know, that each guitar player sort of has their own, like, I, I you know, as as a guitar player, I, I'm, I'm speaking for a lot of other people. I may be wrong, but this is how I feel about it. I think every guitar player, you sort of have, one thing that you, you reach for a lot is you try to find your own tone. And um, if you can kind of go out there and you can find, if, if you're creating your own music, if you're not emulating somebody else or you're not, you're not playing it in the style of such and such, you know, if you're going out there and you're creating your own music, you want to find your own tone. You want to find the sound that works for you and, um, you know, it defines you. And it's, I think everybody has that one song and it's sort of like when you go and you, you play a guitar or, you know, you go to the guitar store and you're looking for a new guitar. 
you maybe play parts of these riffs or you play that song and um i think embryonic journey is sort of like um yorma i mean that's his like when i think about him i think that's just you know i have some stuff that he did with hot tuna where it's sort of like live stuff where he plays that again still but it's just like um you can tell that that's sort of his you know, if, if, if you would give him a guitar and you'd say, do you think this is a good guitar? Go ahead and play it. And he would play it, and he would, if he could play that song on it, then I'm sure he would he would feel that that is a good song. So I think every musician does that, and it's just really cool. You know, I, I was talking about all the different musicians where, you know, they may have one song that just sort of spotlights what they can do, you know what I mean? And it's easy for them to do. And, it's, and, it's, and it seems like that's one of the, you know, I'm sure it's very, just very, it's a very fluid song. If, you know, you just you can hear how it plays, you know. And it's just very fluid how it all comes out. And it's, you, you, you just, you play the whole entire neck of the guitar. And it's just, for me, it's just a beautiful song. I love it. You know, it's an instrumental song on the album, but it's just, it's so awesome. Uh, of course, you know, White Rabbit and Somebody Love, just massive, massive songs off of this album. And uh, I always like, I like to point out, you know, Jerry Garcia, <laughs> musical and spiritual advisor. So um, I know there's one other member in the YouTube community who we had a little conversation one time where Jerry Garcia was our spiritual advisor. So I, I think that I, I wouldn't mind having Jerry Garcia as a musical and spiritual advisor. I don't know who, who wouldn't, you know, seriously. Um, just a fantastic album. I'm sure it's in a lot of people's collections, so it's not... Um, tomorrow, I'm definitely going to do an, another album. It's sitting right over there for me. I, I kind of wrote a lot. I think I, I wrote about 30 days down, so I'm kind of like crossing off the list as we go along. So tomorrow is really going to be an album that um, I don't think anybody has ever... I've, I've never seen this. I mean, you know, spending about three months seriously on the vinyl community, I've not seen anybody talk about this album whatsoever. So uh, tomorrow is definitely going to be a... Uh, a pretty fantastic day so definitely check it out there's going to be an education involved so it's definitely one you're going to want to bring your uh you know your notepad and your pencil too so until then we'll see you and uh take care kevin thanks a lot for the prize we'll see you and it's time to turn off the video